Hey everybody, Al here from Open Walnut, and today we're going to be doing authority, a medium level Windows machine from Hack the Box. So let's begin. We will start off with a full port scan using NABU. I prefer using NABU these days because it seems to be much quicker than Nmap. Let's specify host authority.htp. Then we'll specify top ports which will be full for all port scan. And lastly, we will pass on our results to nmap CLI, which we can specify with nmap CLI flag. And here in the quotation marks, we'll put nmap SV, which stands for version scan, SC, which stands for default script scan, and we will output all of this to a file. Called nmap. And while this is scanning, let's go on and uh, split the terminal. And in this one, we will run nmap since scan on top 100 ports, just so we have something to work with while the original full scan is running. We won't save any output here because we already have the top one going. Okay, so it looks like we have a uh, DNS port and then usual port 20 and then usual Windows ports open. Uh, we have a HTTP server on port 80 and it looks like we have another web server on port 8443. Let's check, let's go and open the browser quick and uh, check out what is on those ports. In the browser, we'll type HTTP semicolon dash dash authority HTTP. Uh, if you would type authority HTTP, chances are you'd end up in the Google search instead of uh, instead of uh, going to the web page hosted on the web server of the victim machine. Nothing special here, just Internet Information Services default page. Now let's go to port 8443. Yep, accept the risk for the private certificate. And this is taking a little bit to load, it seems. And here we have some sort of password self-service and uh, an authentication page. However, at this time, we don't have any credentials. So maybe that's something we can come back to. However, there is configuration manager, configuration editor pages, and there is an error. PMW is currently in configuration mode. This mode allows updating the configuration without authenticating to an LDAP directory first. And user functionality is not available in this mode. After you have verified the LDAP directory settings, use the configuration manager to restrict the configurations to prevent unauthorized changes. After restricting, the configuration can still be changed, but will require LDAP directory authentication first. Okay. Looks like we can come back here in a bit if we find any credentials for this page. Looks like the full port scan is still running. So let's start by enumerating the RPC service on port 135. RPC client, U for anonymous logon. And uh, now we'll uh, specify our host authority HTTP. Let's try to get domain users with enum dom users. Seems like anonymous access does not allow us to perform that action. Let's try another command just to make sure. Query user groups. 
Uh, usually you should specify the group, but I think, yeah, it's denied anyways. So no point. Let's exit out of here and move on to LDAP. Oh, looks like our full port scan is finished. And now it piped the results into Nmap. Anyways, yeah, let's continue with LDAP. So LDAP search age for host authority.htp. And then dash X and dash S. Nope, giving me an error. Something is wrong with my syntax. Let's try this again. Nope, and here our full port scan is finished. Let's go there for a second. And doesn't look we have uh, any any other new services. There is higher LDAP ports, as we can see, 636, 3268, 3269. And then it seems like we have WinRM port that's open on 5985. However, it doesn't seem to be anything new that is interesting. Let's continue with uh, let's continue with LDAP. Hopefully, I can get this context right sometime soon. Yep. Apparently, today I'm just failing. Let's check out the menu real quick. Base DN for search. As for scope. You know what? Uh, let's quickly go and check out the correct command syntax online. Clearly not my LDAP search day today. Let's go to hack tricks, LDAP. Yep, the first link. And let's quickly look for the LDAP search. Yep. Looks like I wasn't far off. Uh, let's just scroll through this. And let's use this syntax.
We're just checking if our credentials are valid or if we can use anonymous credentials. So the command should be sufficient for us. Close that extra window and let's see, yep, let's delete that. And let's uh, input our domain, uh, our IP, well, host name in this case. And then our domain objects. There we go, and let's run that. And in order to perform this operation, a successful bind must be completed on connection. If I'm not mistaken, that pretty much means access denied. Yep, if you find something saying the bind must be completed, it means the credentials are not valid. Okay, so now that we have tried RPC and LDAP, Let's uh, collapse this terminal and uh, move on to SMB. Let's do actually let's do SMB client first. L. So this should list the directories or shares present in on that on that on that SMB share. We have two of them: department shares and development. Let's uh, quickly check out department shares. Let's quickly check out both of them, obviously, and then see which one we can access. So authority.htp. And then quotation mark, department shares, quotation mark, oops. Uh, I must have made a typo. Yep, right there, SMB client. But network name, uh, oh, I see. I've uh, made a typo in the share name as well, it seems. Let's fix that. And let's do dear to see what it is. Uh, looks like we have access denied here. So let's exit and check out the other share. We'll come back here to try more things in case we can't access the other share either. Yep, actually, let's make a separate SMB folder for any artifacts we might find in this year. I usually have make a folder per script or service whenever I know I'm going to get artifacts or suspect I'm going to get artifacts out of that service. So now let's do SMB client again and let's go to development. And let's do deer again. Let's first set mask actually, uh, which is Uh, set mask, which is equals to wildcard in case we want to grab files. So mask just means that there is no 
that there is no filter. It will grab every single file in the directory. Then let's set a prompt off so it doesn't prompt us if we want to grab any files and then let's set the recurse to on. And now let's just grab all of the files. Uh, I just realized I actually did not do dear, but it seems like there are files in this directory. And now, as you can see, it is grabbing all of the files recursively. Uh, seems like it's uh, Ansible, which is an automation tool for configuration management and uh, software orchestration, if I'm not mistaken. And let's actually look up the official definition of this. So Ansible is a suite of software tools that enable infrastructure as code. It is open source and the suite includes software provisioning, configuration management, and application deployment functionality. And there are some interesting folders, ADCS, which I think stands for Active Directory Certificate Service, LDAP, and PWM, which seems to be the name of the password sharing service on port 8443 that we encountered earlier. So let's go into automation and Ansible and let's take a look around. Yep, as you can see, the folders I just mentioned, AD. CS. Then we have LDAP, PWM, and another folder called share. Let's collapse this terminal so we have more space to work in. And let's do a less wildcard to see what's inside every folder. The structure kind of looks similar. There is readme in uh, three of the folders. Uh, there is a few other MD files and there is defaults folders. And yeah, it looks like all of these are some sort of uh, Ansible folders. So let's uh, do a quick easy grab, ignore case, so it doesn't differentiate between capital and lowercase letters. Then we do R for recursive search, and we'll do something like password wildcard, just easy low hanging fruit, you know? And let's look through the results. First we have password for private keys. If not present, they'll be prompted for input password, output password. Doesn't look like anything special. Oh, there's echo vault password in one of the files. I'm pretty sure we should find some sort of credential the, in Ansible as typically uh, developers can make the mistake and leave uh, some sort of credential or a clue for credentials in those kind of files. Uh, so far, nothing too interesting, it seems. But uh, let's get to the bottom of this list. Pam deny. Okay, the, these are the two interesting entries. P. WM, PMW admin password vault, and LDAP admin password vault. And here we actually have uh, a pair of credentials that's open, cherry tree, just so we have somewhere to take notes. Uh, let's make a, yeah, let's copy 
paste the password for robot user. Uh, let's make a new node actually. Credentials. And let's copy paste the Tomcat, uh, the Tomcat username and password and the other Tomcat username and password. Maybe they will come in handy. Now that we have these passwords, uh, let's uh, cat the contents of main.yml in pmw default folder. Okay, it looks like here we have some sort of a hash. Ansible Vault IS 256. Uh, let's Let's see, let's just confirm what this is. Let's copy, let's copy this. Script command encrypts the, the format any string you type. Ansible vault encrypt string. Uh, let's see if we can crack this with Hashcat. Let's look up how to do this. Let's just look at the format because I know Hashcat, Hashcat can be very picky with format of certain hashes. So here it looks like it's just all in one line separated by spaces. Let's check out another article as well for format. I usually like to check a couple when it comes to this kind of stuff. Here we see that they are on separate lines, just like they seem to be in that uh, in that uh, YAML file. Let's check a third source just in case. And here it seems to be on two separate lines as well. Okay. So I actually liked the format of uh, the second article or blog post or whatever it is that I clicked on the most. Let's go back there and let's follow the instructions. So first of all, let's copy and paste the content that we need. Uh, let's create, let's CD back to the SMB or actually no, back to the authority folder. And now let's create uh, a new file for us to put this hash into. We'll do admit login dot hash. And let's paste it. Let's improve the format. I'm just gonna use my keyboard keys. I'm sure there is probably a neater way to remove white space than this, but doesn't come to mind. And this is nice and quick at the moment. Let's save this. And let's make sure that this works. We will use Ansible to John utility. And let's put our, yep. Looks like it translated it to the correct format. Now let's do another hash. And again, let's uh, put it in the correct format.
save it and now let's do the final one. And now that we have finished creating all three hash files, let's get them. Perfect. All of them look good. Now let's use uh, John to Ans Ansible to John, sorry. And uh, we'll do wildcard.hash as well. And we will save. And uh, we will save actually before we save as we can see there's uh there's text before the semicolon i'm pretty sure hashcat complains about that sort of stuff so uh let's pipe this into a file without that text being present we'll use ansible to john we'll pipe it into cut we'll use uh, the column as a delimiter and we'll select the second element and we will save that into creds.hash oh, we've got some sort of an error let's just check that all of our perfect yeah that look this looks good and now let's use hashcat. I'll just copy paste it from here. So, so here we have hashcat, uh, hash cracking utility. The A stands for type of attack, which, which is zero here, which means dictionary. M stands for module, I'm pretty sure, which is 16. 900 for uh, for Ansible Vault type of hash. Then we have our past our file with hashes, and we will specify we will specify the path to our rockyou.txt word list. So typically, hashcat could take a while considering it three hashes and considering how big the word list is. So I will pause this and we will be back in a bit. And now the cracking has finished and it looks like we got the results. And uh, the password seem the same. I guess it makes sense. Maybe they're all in the same vault. By the way, if you think there is a better I, uh, there is a better way than saving them to a file one by one like i did earlier please uh make sure to comment and let me know what's the more efficient way anyways let's do ansible decrypt now oh actually it's uh i think it's ansible ansible decrypt Although I think it's Ansible Vault, whatever, let's finish this command. Uh, actually, no, yeah, it's Ansible Vault, decrypt, admin, uh, login, hash, and let's paste the password. Oh, wrong password. Uh, did I copy this or not? Whatever, let's copy this. And, uh, yep, let's paste it into here. Decryption is successful. Let's do now admin pass hash. Copy paste again. Decryption successful. 
And lastly, let's do LDAP pass hash decryption successful. Okay, let's cat the login and let's cat the admin pass for PWM. And lastly, let's uh, let's uh, decrypt the LDAP. Actually, no, you know what? Let's decrypt the LDAP in a bit and uh, let's try the credentials for PMWM first. Service PWM and let's copy the password, paste it and let's sign in. Oh, looks like we've got an error indicating that directory is unavailable. Uh, okay, let's do configuration editor and let's paste the password into here. The same user, just some timestamps of fail authentications. And uh, yeah, looks, let's look around. Nothing really interesting in the default settings. Configuration notes, nothing really here. Not much in display. Text message. Let's check out the error. Doesn't seem to be much interesting here. Uh, let's go to settings. Word list, not sure what this is for, but it seems to be empty. Tokens, it seems like allowed characters for tokens, nothing interesting here. Let's check out security. Uh, again, Nothing too interesting, it seems. Uh, let's go check out LDAP. So here we have connections. Looks like we can insert or we can edit the server settings. We have certificates. We have login setup. Nothing interesting there. It doesn't seem to be anything interesting in user attributes. Quick glance, nothing interesting in Oracle DS or in Active Directory settings. Okay, you know what? Let's go back to connection and uh, I'll log in setup quick, nothing interesting. I'll go back to connection and I think here we can use a tool called Responder and uh, a responder can act as an LDAP server and capture credentials when a Windows system attempts to authenticate using LDAP. If we are successful, a responder will log the capture credentials and uh, some other information. So, yep, let's, uh, let's turn on responder. Uh, let's start to responder H. I uh, forget the syntax. Okay, so responder. Let's copy paste that. 
Let's select our VPN interface and we're gonna run it at root. And now the responder is listening. Uh, notice that a responder does not run on uh, secure LDAP, it runs on a regular LDAP server. So we, we're going to need to specify the non-secure LDAP server. Let's uh, grab our Let's grab our server's IP address. And let's modify the settings in the application. Yep, let's press add value. And here we will do LDAP column paste our IP address. And we will do the port 389 for regular LDAP. Let's go back to responder window. Not sure what's uh, going on with my Linux. It seems to be a bit laggy. And let's press test LDAP. And here it seems like we got our credentials. As you can see, we got a clear text password and a clear text username. So let's put those into cherry tree. Now let's save this just in case. I'll just save them the documents. We'll do authority CT. Okay, so now let's grab our password and save our password. And now we can exit the responder. Now that we have a set of credentials, let's uh, try and, and uh, authenticate to the box using uh, evil WinRM. Because remember the WinRM port uh, that we discovered uh, that the WinRM port is open earlier. Let's do H for the syntax and let's do I for the target. And let's do you LDAP SVC. Yep, not sure what's going on with my window switching. And let's take the password. Let's paste the password.
Uh, this is taking a while, surprisingly, but let's wait a little bit. Oh, looks like I got an error message and I am not authorized. Uh, let's quickly go. Let's quickly check out the IP. Uh, IP seems to be. Uh, let's just. Uh, let's use. Uh, let's use IP instead, just in case. Well, actually. I think I've spelled the username wrong. Nothing to do with my IP. Let's do, let's redo evil veneram. Let's do, yep, let's do authority HTTP again, user SVC LDAP and password is right there just the username mistake and it looks like we're in there we go and now let's explore let's let's explore a little bit and that stuff we have our user.txt flag uh, looks like the only users here, as we see, LDAP and administrator. And here we have a couple of uh, interesting things. We have the jar file for the PWM application. And we have a search folder and the department shares. Let's go to department shares and check out if now that we're authorized, if anything isn't there. We can do LS, account finance, HR. Let's try to do recursive. That did not work. Let's see how to recurse with directory command. I believe it's dash, sorry, uh, backslash S, or front slash S. Oh, did not work. I wonder why. Yeah, it says dear front slash s b front slash s b. For some reason, it takes us to to discuss. So let's just let's just do a lot for per directory. So far, it doesn't seem like anything is there. Yep, it seems that this was uh, a rabbit hole. Let's go back, look at the search directory. Looks like there is a certificate present here. Um, okay, you know what? Let's uh, take it back a bit and start enumerating for privilege escalation from the beginning. Let's do who am I, privs. Ah, uh, um, I misspelled both of those, I'm pretty sure. It's who am I and it's front slash priv. Yep. Oh, we have some privileges as the machine account privilege at workstation to domain. Notify privilege bypass traverse checking and increase the process working set. The only interesting one here is add workstation to domain. However, I don't see how it could be useful uh, right this second. So let's continue enumerating.
which groups do we belong to another interesting group is certificate service decom access which makes me think that this may this privilege escalation may have something to do with certificate service remember we had another folder called uh, adcs which stands for Active Directory Certificate Service in uh, in our Ansible as well. So let's exit out of here. And uh, let's uh, quickly CD. Actually, I believe we, we, for this, we can use a certify tool to enumerate if, if uh, the host is indeed uh, vulnerable to some sort of, uh, to some sort of certificate vulnerability. There is a good article that just came out uh, not too long ago on the Black Hills InfoSec in regards to this. Let's go check it out. I'm sure there are quite a few other articles covering this, but I really like the material that uh, these folks produce at Black Hills. Yep, so I'm not gonna get into too much detail here. I can just link the article if you want to read about how to abuse uh, certificate services and details. But here we will, uh, we will start with certify find command, which, uh, which is written right here. Let's uh, copy and paste this and I will explain command to you shortly. So certified find is used to enumerate the to enumerate Active Directory for any vulnerable certificate service associated threats or vulnerabilities, vulnerable vulnerabilities. Jesus. Uh, yep. So here we will put service name, sorry, uh, username, and then we will put the domain controller IP address. Let me quickly get that. I'll just use ping. Just more efficient at the moment rather than any other way. And then we will select vulnerable to search for vulnerable template. And then we'll do enable just to make sure that templates are enabled and to only include enabled tem templates in the output. Yeah, but just to confirm uh, the syntax, let's do find help and paste it and quickly go over it again. So, yep, find. Then we have our username uh, at domain, domain name. Uh, shortly after we have uh, the DC IP address, as I mentioned. And I think we forgot password. Actually, you know what? I Let's try without password. I, I want to see if uh, it will ask us for password after so we don't have to input it into in, the, in plain text. 
Then we have vulnerable, which only shows vulnerable certificate templates based on the nested group memberships. And lastly, we have enabled, as I mentioned, which shows only enabled certificate templates. And let's run this. Oh, and we'll do all Bloodhound output in case we want to look at it in Bloodhound later on. Oh, perfect. It asks for a password, which we can uh, then grab from uh, our cherry tree. And let's paste it here. Invalid credentials. Oh, I guess I miscopied the password. Let's copy it again. I think I forgot the L in the beginning. And let's run that again. And it looks like the only file it saved was the zip file for Bloodhound, uh, which I actually wanted the other part of the output as well. You know what, let's make a separate directory for this because there will be a couple of files. And uh, let's move the Bloodhound, the certified Bloodhound output there. And let's run it again, paste the password. And now we got our text file as well. So the text file is where all of our uh, vulnerable certificate details will be. So let's, let's cut that. And here we go that uh, we have the escalation number one, vulnerability. Here we have our template name, core VPN. And let's just compare that to what they have. So escalation one is certificate vulnerability, which allows low privileged users to enroll and request a certificate on behalf of any domain object specified by the user. This means that any user with enrollment rights can request a certificate for a privileged account, such as a domain administrator. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Templates vulnerable to escalation one have the following configurations. Client authentication, true. Enabled equals to true. Enrolled supplies, subject is set to true. Requires management approval is set to false. And authorized signatures required is zero. And here we have nice few screenshots that outline all of these details. As you can see, client authentication true, enabled true. Then we have our enrollment supply subject also equal to true. And let's find manager's approval, which is right there as well, set to false. And authorized signatures required is zero. So looks like so far it's right by the book. So, and it does not look like we have our user in any of those groups. However, if you've noticed there is uh, 
a computers group. And as you can remember, we have the rights to add workstations to the domain. So it looks like we will be able to we will be able to maybe abuse this by adding another domain to the computer. Sorry, another computer to the domain. And we can do this by using impact it's at computer. And I just pulled out help. And as you can see, we need a few different uh, arguments here, computer name, computer pass, the method you want to use to add the user to, to add the computer to, to the domain. And then we have SAMR and LDAPs. We will most likely use LDAPs considering everything that we've been working with so far as required LDAPs. Which then can be also specified by port 636. Anyways, let's begin. So in packet, at computer, uh, we'll do computer computer pass. We'll name computer open walnut computer pass password one two three. And then method will do LDAPs. And lastly, we'll specify the user, uh, sorry, the domain username. And let's grab our password from cherry tree. Copy it, paste it. And uh, we can add our domain to the computer. Oops, uh, I believe I made an error. And instead of uh, specifying computer name, I just put computer as a flag. So let's quickly fix that. And let's run this command again. Well, now we successfully added the machine account, open walnut, dollar sign with password, password one, two, three. So let's quickly go back to uh, BHIS article. Here we have the request command. So certify, rec help. Let's pull up the manual. So every, all the flags are right in front of us. So our newly created account, machine account is now part of the domain computer group. And uh, therefore, we can request a certificate using the core PPN template that we found that is vulnerable earlier. So let's uh, head back and let's do certify request. Uh, actually, you know what, prior to that, let's uh, open another open another window quick and uh, yeah, let's open another window quick, sorry, and um, cat the information we got from uh, certify uh, find earlier. So all of that in front of us, then we can just copy and paste it into the command. So certify dash, oh, sorry, certify request dash certificate authority. Let's copy and paste our certificate authority. And next, We'll specify the vulnerable template, which is Corp VPN. Now we can specify the UPN that we will be requesting. So dash UPN. 
administrator at authority HTB. And let's specify DNS just in case as well, in case uh, the UPN method doesn't work. Let's uh, copy and paste it from right there, authority.authority.htp. Uh, I pressed enter by accident. Um, next. Let's uh, specify our target, which will be authority.htp. Following, let's specify name server. We'll get with ping command. Let's copy and paste. Next, we'll do DC IP. And the last two elements we have remaining is username and password. So let's copy and Let's copy our username and password. Actually, let's put it in the cherry tree, just in case we're going to need it later. And now let's specify uh, our user, which would be open walnut dollar sign at authority dot hack the box. And then let's copy and paste our password. And we got some sort of RPC error and it's suggesting that we use debug flag to get more details. So let's do that. And it looks like we got the exact error, but now we have more details. So we try to connect to the box. The first step with re re resolution. Looks like it tried to connect for via SMB first, and then it got access denied, which then it proceeded to trying to authenticate over RPC and got an unknown error. I will assume it's also access denied. Let's go over everything quick, just to make sure I didn't mess anything up. Editing computer looks good. The password, yep. Machine account name. Oh. Let's try this again. And we get the exact same error. I wonder if for some reason our computer may be not part of the domain. So let's create let's create another computer just to eliminate that. And we will then Check it with something like crack map exact to make sure that we have access. I guess we could have done it with this one, but whatever, let's just create a new one. So we created a new user called open one, sorry, a new machine account called open one. And now let's use crack map to see if we can access SMB shares with it. So username, password, and then let's specify the IP address.
did not get any output. Maybe it we need H for host. And looks like H triggered the help menu. Let's go up just to see the example syntax. So let's just try to put um, our vulnerable target in front of username and password. We'll do authority.htb instead of username and password. Sorry, instead of IP address. And here it looks like we can successfully authenticate with, uh, with SMB. So let's try running that again. Uh, let's change target to to an IP address just to skip to skip the resolve step. One last element in the equation. And now it seems like we got a different error. Something to do with none type and request. Uh, yeah, now that's weird. Not sure what this is about, but considering it's a different error, maybe that's a good sign. But it looks like it can't connect to the endpoint at the connection times out. Let's try to ping the machine. And maybe the victim host went down. Uh, it seems down. Perhaps let's give it a few and let's try to ping it again. Let's give it just a bit more time. And looks like it's up. Not sure what happened there, but if we try again, looks like it's the exact same result. So let's try with the new user we created. And looks like the exact same result. Hmm. This should be working. Let's uh, perhaps add the domain control to our this to our resolution file and see if that works. Or before that. Yeah, maybe we'll just restart the... No, so... Everything here looks good, so I'm just uh, reviewing. No, I'm just reviewing all of the material again before attempting to do anything. I'll do sudo. <clears throat> I meant to do sudo nano. So let's do sudo nano ATC resolve. And although we're specifying 
name server in the command line and we're specifying the, the um, domain control IP in the command line. That to eliminate it, let's just specify name server here as well. And we'll set it as our victim machine. Yep, let's save that. And uh, let's create So let's run this again. Since we changed the settings, uh, it looks like the exact same error that we are getting. Let's do open to Sorry, I feel like I got a, a little bit ahead of myself here. Let's just go over in packets help again just to make sure just to triple check everything although i think i did everything correctly there so we do have computer name we do have computer pass we have the method, we have the port. Uh, perhaps let's uh, specify <laughs> yeah let's let's do let's specify open to create a user and it has been created. Specify DC host just in case. Just to make sure it's using the box, even though there is nothing but that box. Let's do open three as well. And let's go back to Certify. And let's do Open 3. Dollar sign. And with the auto-created password. Notice how before we were specifying password, but in this last try, we um, we let the system create its own. 
Let's copy and paste it here. And apparently the result is the exact same. Um, what else can we try? What else can we try? Let's try to change the settings uh, of Network Manager and GUI. Pretty much the exact same thing as we've done in uh, resolve.conf file, but this is directly through graphic interface, just in case. So we'll do authority.htp and following, we'll put the IP address. And now let's uh, restart the network manager for just to ensure that the change takes place. And I created the user, but I did not save the credentials like I did with Open Walnut Machine account. Uh, I guess we have to create another another account now. Sorry, another computer to the main. So let's uh, use the impact it again. Actually, let's use our first, our first one that we've created just to see, and we get the exact same error. I guess we can continue debugging. I'm just thinking of uh, what to do next. So perhaps now that we've tried now that we've tried with the port, let's try without the port, see if that fixes an issue. Although I doubt it. I'm just eliminating silly possibilities at this point. So let's do open four and we'll put the password right here. And still looks like the exact same error. And yep, still getting the exact same error. Uh, perhaps let's try to change the method to SEMAR, although that doesn't really make sense considering all of the hints so far throughout this box point us to LDAP service. Let's create another computer, open 101. And Copy and paste the password.
and it looks like the exact same error. Uh, at this point, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong, and I think I'm just going to restart the victim box. I'll be back in a second. So at this point, the victim has been restarted. So let's uh, let's redo the flow again with impacket at computer. I'm convinced I've been doing everything right, so I'm not sure where this is going sideways, but I'm hoping after restarting the machine, it should be okay. Copy paste the password. Let's specify DCIP. Let's copy and paste the IP. And uh, let's specify the main net bias just in case, which is HTTP. Let's do method, LDAPs. We'll do port 636. And computer name. Do test two. Okay, so now that the computer has been created, we can do certify request. Test two. And I'm putting everything in uh, single quotation marks as well, this time just in case. Specify certificate authority, authority CA, target. Uh, we'll just uh, do IP address instead of uh, the main name. And then template, core PPN, UPN, administrator, at authority.htb let's do dns authority dot authority dot htp dcip and then name server debug let's run this Oh no, not again. Everything looks good. Just double checking everything. Oh, I forgot the dollar sign. And Oh, looks like we got a different error this time. And there we go. We finally got the certificate. As you can see, besides minor syntax changes in this run, I didn't change much. Um, I literally just included some quotes and maybe and switched the positions around a little bit. My computer is still being a bit laggy. Yep, oh, yep, sorry about that. Not sure why my machine is acting up. Just trying to, yeah, just trying to open uh, uh, the browser so we can check out uh, the next step in uh, the certified escalation 
Number one sequence. So I think next one will be certify auth. Let's just go to the GitHub page. And if we go to escalation one, it should tell us right here. So it's certify auth dash pfx, our certificate file name, and then DCIP. So let's do certify auth. Let's do help, just so it's in front of us. As you can see, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, just uh, the PFX flag for our password certificates and DCIP name server. And uh, there's alternative authentication. There is username, domain, and uh, then there's LDAP shell. Let's just try the one in the manual. But I have a feeling that we're going to need to use LDAP shell. So certify auth, certificate, and uh, DCIP. Oh, I forgot the... And let's specify zero for administrator UPN. And uh, it looks like some sort of a Kerberos format or data type. I mean, we can look it up, but I think in the interest of time, let's just uh, try the LDAPs shell method considering all things LDAP so far. And looks like we're connecting to LDAPs. Let's wait a little for it to connect. And looks like we've got a shell. Uh, let's type help to see the list of commands. And here we're presented with, uh, with, uh, with a list of different commands we can run. Uh, what jumps out to me from this list is add computer, sorry, uh, add computer, add user, and add user to the group. I think we, we, we already have the ability to add the computer. So I think let's do add user and then add user to administrative group. Here we go. We have user and a password and now let's add user to group. Open Walnut and then administrators. That looks okay. Let's use evil will winrm to to connect as our newly created user. So it will, it will win RM, you open Walnut password. Let's copy and paste the password. And then IP address. Oh, okay. I guess I need to do dash I for IP before the actual IP. There we go. Let's wait for it to establish connection. And looks like we've connected successfully. Let's do who am I groups. And here we can see that we're part of the administrators group. Now let's see D2C, users, administrator, desktop.
And here we have our root.txt flag. And yeah, that is it. Uh, my apologies for all of the errors. I hope the you enjoy the debugging a little bit. Unfortunately, sometimes that does happen. Not every single exploit is reliable. And uh, yeah, sometimes you just need to restart the victim for it to work. Uh, on real engagement, you obviously wouldn't be able to do that, but it's not real engagement. Anyways, thank you for the video. I hope you enjoyed, and uh, I'll be back soon with another video. Cheers.